Sin City. Sin city. city of Sin. Basin City. I believe the actual name of the city. Have you... Oh, was it? Yeah. Have you seen this movie before? Is this your first time? That was my first time. So this is my second or third time seeing it. What was your opinion as a first time viewer? Um, I, uh, I liked it. Yeah. I think for the most part, uh, it was a little slow at parts, Mm -hmm. but, um, I think I liked each of the main characters. I didn't like Clive Owen's story. I didn't like it the first time I saw it and I, it was really slow this time. I was going to say that was probably the most boring. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, my favorite was Mickey Rourke. Yeah. Uh, Marv character. Marv, yeah. I mean, that's basically his movie. I thought, I thought that one was great. I think he's the star, even over Bruce Willis. Yeah. Um. Um. I I'm like, I have a weird opinion on this movie because there's a lot of things I really really like, and I think they did really really well. And there's a lot of other yeah. things that I was like, oh, this is. This is not good. This is bad. And so it's like this conflicting of like, wow, this is great. And oh, this is not good at all of going back and forth throughout the movie. Like one of the things that I really didn't enjoy was the fighting. I thought the fighting was terrible. I thought the editing on the fighting, the, everything was like the, it was like there's an extra beat for every cut of where you can tell they're like, all right, you ready? Okay, go. And you can just see. Like, it doesn't feel fluid. It doesn't feel like it. it's quick or fast-paced. It just feels like um, bad choreography. Yeah, I could see that. Um, the fighting was nothing to, to talk about and like, it, as far as being good. And I know it's a, it's a comic book, right? It's based on the graphic novels by Frank Miller. And that's where all the style comes from. And I thought that was fantastic. But the the over the top fighting, like there was no consistency in the the rules of what people can do and like what's yeah. survivable and what's not. Because Marv gets shot right in the head at one point, right? When uh, so many times. Yeah. And he's just he's he gets a, shot a lot. Yeah. But the Goldie so Bruce Willis sh- too. Goldie shoots him. In the forehead, I believe, or not Goldie, but Goldie's Does twin he get sister. Shot in the head. Yeah, when she's in the car and she Maybe, shoots, right? I'm pretty sure he gets clipped in the forehead. And it, the idea might be that it bounces off of him, like it just grazed him and he falls down. But I was like, why shouldn't that kill him? I, I can, I can go with you if you want to say you can get shot in the body a bunch of times and survive. That's that's one yeah. thing, right? Like that's that's possible in some. Not, I mean, not in the way that the, it happens in this movie, but like you can get shot multiple times and survive that. That's not outside the realm of possibility, but right. there didn't feel to be any consistency on what is dangerous and what's not. It just seemed like, all right, well, for the plot, he has to get knocked out. So now he's going to get knocked out. But for the plot, he needs to be able to get hit by a car and not have any issues from that. So it was just like, yeah what's happening here um yeah i don't know i i think they just maybe they were going for him being the over the top resistant to damage i mean he even survives the first wave of electricity shock yeah when he's in the electric chair so, yeah okay. I, mean, I don't know yeah so i watched the second one which we were talking about doing both but we're not going to do them both. I don't really think we need to do a second episode on uh, the second movie, A Dame to Kill For, because it's pretty much the same thing. Okay. Um, yeah. But I was trying, when I was watching the second one, I was trying to remember what happened to Marv, because he just is in the second one. I was like, I, I thought, he I felt like he, he, isn't he is. One. I thought he died. Me too. It's very close strange. close it out with him dying... Cause in the electric chair, Bruce Willis is dead, so it's not like a a, a prequel. Right. But Marv is still alive, and they just like he they just throw him in. They're like, all right, here we go. It's just very weird. But I I don't I haven't huh. read the comics, so I don't know the lore. Like, yeah, 
if there's like a reason why he survived that or what happened but right. um but yeah no I, I mickey rourke was great in this um joss so, harnett so was, uh, benicio del toro yeah he's creepy right I did not realize that was him mm-hmm. until, I don't know, I think I was like almost done with the movie, and I was like looking on IMDb, and I saw his name, I was like, wait, who was he? Yeah. I had to go back, I was like, that's, even knowing it's him, it, I couldn't tell it was him. Yeah, the prosthetics they except use. For, except for his eyes. Mm-hmm. The prosthetics they yeah. use looks really good, um, and it helps doing it in black and white, so it hides it better. But it hides it really well, yeah. Yeah, I I really enjoyed the the style of this, the black and white like. I didn't think I was going to, mm. uh, but after the first like I don't know the ap- pretty much after the Josh Hartnett Har- Hartnett yeah. scene at the beginning, uh-huh. I was I was all in. Yeah, so that scene with Josh Hartnett in the beginning, they actually did that in one day. They filmed that before they had the rights he um oh yeah i did read that Rob- that's how they pitched it mm-hmm. they robert rodriguez called or got in touch with frank miller i was like hey let's try this if you like it we'll continue on with the movie if you hate it at least we'll have this little sh- cool short story that you can do whatever with and then in a day they filmed that beginning sequence and used that not only to convince uh frank miller but bruce willis and all the other actors they're like this is what we're going for. This is what we're trying to do. And I I love the quiet moments in this movie. The Like that Josh Hartnett scene, I thought was great. Like it was really well done. And it just, it's really engaging the way they tell the story in those quieter moments. But again, when the action starts happening, which is basically all of Clive Owen's parts was more action heavy. I was just like, all right, this is, this is boring. Yeah, I, I I did like their use of like the the black and white mm-hmm. and the way they did certain shadows or characters. Yeah, the main one being Elijah Wood. Yeah, Elijah Wood. He, is he so creepy in this. He was already creepy, right? But it was something about the white of his glasses. Mm-hmm. I don't know what about it that made it so much creepier <laughs> for me. Like that made him so like yeah. scary almost. Yeah. That was cr- super creepy. Yeah. Like, I thought he was a great character, too. So there's, what, three main stories. You have Marv, who is... Yeah. What was his story in the first one? He was trying to... Wait, okay. Marv, is that what you said? Mm-hmm. Who was so he going Marv after? was... He was going after whoever killed uh, the girl. Oh, That's Goldie. That's right. I was, I'm was. i getting oh, mixed up yeah. with the second one. Yeah, Marv was trying to get revenge for Goldie, who was murdered. She she hooked up with him. She got murdered in their sleep. He's trying to figure out who did it. Bruce Willis is a cop who saves a little 11-year-old girl and uh, goes to prison because he gets betrayed by the kidnapper's dad, who is the mayor or something like that, like really important yeah, person. He's He is the... No, okay. The kidnap it's the kidnapper's brother, right? Was like a s- senator or something. No, it was the dad. Was it Yeah, was he, it his dad? Mm-hmm. He was always talking oh, about yeah, how yeah, he yeah, wanted yeah. to be okay. president and stuff. Yeah, you're right. Um so he he saves a girl, but he goes to prison for it and gets out eight years later and is now trying to protect that same girl. And then Clive yes. Owen, who is like an assassin is uh working i think he's yeah he's a hitman he's working with the prostitutes who are in one area Brittany murphy Brittany murphy he was dating her and then or he was hanging out with her i don't think they're actually dating and bell how do you say his name del toro what's his first name i can yeah i can never say that um he shows up and is like threatening her and like about to beat her up and so Clive Owen fights them off and then uh, they go to the prostitute area and get murdered, but it turns out they were all cops. And so now the prostitutes are trying to hide the bodies without getting caught. Otherwise it's going to be a full out war with the prostitutes and the cops. I yeah. think the Bruce Willis and the Marv stuff is really strong. I think the 
Clive Owen stuff with all the prostitutes is is just kind of goofy. Like it, it, I I didn't like the any of the girls really. Like they felt like they were trying way too hard to be intimidating, and it it didn't feel yeah. authentic. Um, yep. And <sighs> Clive Owen, I, I don't know. I, I just didn't enjoy him. Um, but Bruce Willis, I felt I like liked. Um, did a really good job in this. I liked the whole trying to get uh, the head back. That that was funny when he is talking to him after he's dead. Uh, oh, yeah. Like in the car and stuff like that. And then after he... Just everything. I don't know. You, the head yeah, stuff. Oh. Yeah. yeah. But uh, yeah. I, I thought that was good. Um, man, I, I feel like we're just talking in circles again. I don't know what's going on. And the movie is kind of a big circle. But that's true. They're all so all three stories are connected and interwoven together, which I think is a pretty cool story technique or storytelling technique. Um, it can get yeah. old if you don't do it well, but I felt like they handled it or forced. Yeah, I felt like they handled it really well in this one. Uh, less so in the second one because you, okay, in the first one, you watch it and you don't really know that they're going to interweave everything. It seems like they yeah. just bump into a random character, whatever. It doesn't matter. But then you find out that character is actually going to be a main character, and then you follow that story. In the second one, you expect that, so it like it doesn't work yeah. as well, but it's still, still somewhat interesting. Um, they, yeah, I don't know. What did you think of the the yellow man? He's so gross. Oh, it's so gross. It, it, run, it reminded me a lot of the... Your brother? Uh, yeah. <laughs> the hunchback guy from 300. Yeah. Like so the, the guy who wants to be a Spartan or whatever. Mm-hmm. So Frank Miller wrote that, right? He wrote 300. No, I, no, I know, yeah. Right. But who directed... That was Zack Snyder. Zack Snyder did 300. Robert Rodriguez did uh, yeah. Sin City. Yes, um, with guest Quentin Tarantino. Yes. Yeah, I don't know which, which one is that, Tarantino did. Is that did. a common thing? They said he did the car with, with Jude Law, or sorry, <laughs> Jude Law. Clive Owen? Clive Owen and Benicio Del Toro. Okay. That was Quentin Tarantino. Oh, he just did the one scene? I believe so. Okay. I thought he took one of the whole segments, like that he took one of the characters, but I, I, I wasn't sure about that. That's what I read. I'm pretty sure. I don't know if it was the whole, I think it was just that. Yeah sequence mm-hmm. um yeah is, is is guest directors on a movie is that common i think I, I with feel like i've never heard of that i think with them it is with tarantino and robert rodriguez i think they're like pretty good friends they yeah. did uh the grindhouse movies death proof and right. uh yeah whatever the other one was like i think they there's a lot of crossover with them um but i don't know there's not I mean, there's not a lot of movies that are broken up in a similar way as Sin City, so I think it's harder to have someone come in and be a guest director. And just do a random scene. Yeah, yeah, because it you want visually and tonally, you want things to be consistent. And so if you have another director come in, you can muddy that up. But with this... Gotta have the continuity. With this, there doesn't it doesn't really matter, right? It, the, the lack of continuity in this doesn't hurt the movie because it's so over the top it's so you know it's there's no consistency uh, there's consistency there's no um what should i say it's not like the real world at all so for things to be crazy like that guy getting shot through the chest with arrow and being like hey you guys see this like to me i didn't like the joke but in the world no one was surprised by that you know what i'm saying like so yeah you can expect anything to happen and it doesn't stand out as like weird But yeah, I I enjoy Sin City. I I this was the first R-rated movie I went and saw cuz it was out when I turned 17. Oh, really? Yeah. I had seen other R-rated movies, but this is the first one I went to the theater and bought my ticket for and they did not card this me. This is the first one you didn't see. And I was upset about it. I was oh. like, "How are you not going to do that? Like it's my 17th birthday, and you're not going to card me? That's not cool." Um also, I don't think I ever got carded for an R-rated movie. I got turned away uh, once or twice when I was like 12, but other than that, people never seem to care. 
I feel like I been carded like twice on an R-rated movie. Yeah. What you know? What it was funny. One of them was like I felt like it was so dumb. It was uh, the Heartbreak Kid. Heartbreak. Ben Stiller. You remember the? Mm-mm. He gets married and he's on his honeymoon to Mexico, and he falls in love with another woman. Yeah. Is um. Um. The guy who does a lot of voices on The Simpsons is that the one he's in, where he's like naked? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, I don't remember. Uh, that yeah, well. so it's pretty funny, but yeah. it was like so random to be carded for it. <laughs> but yeah, whatever. Oh, yeah. Um, but yeah, Sin City. Uh, I did like it. I will probably watch the second one. I just gotta find it. Yeah, it's worth watching. Um, I just don't think it'll give us much more to talk about. The right. It's very similar. We could do a a mini on it. Yeah, maybe next week or something. It's very similar. Uh, Jorson, Joseph Gordon-Levitt's in it, and he he like kind of continues the, some of the storylines from the first one. Uh, Is it young Bruce Willis with Bruce Willis's <laughs> face CGI'd on top? Exactly. It's Looper Part One. Um, oh, okay. Uh, it follows more of Jessica Alba's story, and more of Marv, which again is weird because it's definitely dead. Probably because they knew he was the best character. He really was. I'm like, yeah, we should not have. We should not have killed him. <laughs> well, I, th- I think I think it's like really true to the comics. I don't think they wrote very yeah. much. They're just like, I. Their goal was to bring the comics alive, and that's pretty much what yeah. they did. I got you. But uh, yeah, uh, overall, what's your rating for Sin City? Um, okay. Since CD, I'll probably give it a three. A three? Out of the zero to five uh, to negative five. Yeah, five. Neg- we need yeah. a better way to give, explain it. Give like, it a three. It always feels so clunky to say out of negative five to five. Eh. Um, <laughs> no one's listening, and, and we understand it, so. Yeah. Uh, yeah, a three. I think it's, I think it's definitely fair. got rewatchability for me. I think it's something I could definitely watch again in yeah. the future. I uh I, so. I didn't hate rewatching it this time. I just I have no desire to see it again right now. That might change later oh, on. Oh no, I, yeah. But like right now I can't imagine watching it again in my life. But who knows what'll happen. Okay. You never know. But uh next week I still think we should do uh Fast and the Furious, Taylor. Let's 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 start with Fast and the Furious one, and see how it goes for you. As is tradition. <laughs> well, I mean, we we want we don't have to I was commit to start with six to, to the whole series yet. Let's do the first one and see see how that goes. I feel like you're just gonna steamroll this whole thing, you know, and end up watching all of these stupid movies. I would never do that to you. Of course. Um, yeah. All right. We'll watch the first one. I'm telling you, they, the first one is good. The second and third are not very good, and the fourth is like, eh. But after that, they like really find their groove and become crazy, and it's a lot of fun to watch. Uh, we'll see. Trust me. You can trust me on this one. But so I next week, though, because you also like Sharknado. Have you watched Sharknado? I've seen part of one of them. You have to watch it the whole so thing of Sharknado. And then you'll yeah, understand. It's do it. it's bonkers. It's nuts. I just, I can't. <laughs> um, but yeah, so next week we're going to do Fast and the Furious. If you want to listen to that now and hear Taylor's opinion about it and about how much he loves it, you can go to Patreon for a dollar. You get all our uh, episodes two weeks in advance. And uh, you help us help us decide who has to get punished yeah and uh yeah so we'll be back thanks for listening and uh follow us on twitter i seen that pod like us on facebook and taylor is a big fat jerk and educate yourself <laughs>